Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, a show that examines all aspects of sexuality, from physical to emotional to spiritual. Join our hosts as they discuss age-old questions, common misconceptions, and the latest topics surrounding sex. They'll tackle topics about sexuality from the complicated to the hilarious and everything in between. GSMC Sex Podcast is your show for all all of your questions about sex, even some you might not have thought of yet. And welcome back to the GSMC Sex Podcast, hosted by the GSMC Podcast Network. I, of course, am your host, Becky. And first of all, Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to 2020. Uh, new year, same me. <laughs> but hopefully new year, new sexual experiences, new sexual adventures. Um, that's all I could really hope for anyone, <laughs> really. Um, but yeah, happy new year. Um, I personally had a really great new year. I had friends over and my partner and I stayed up till five o'clock in the morning, just reconnecting and being with each other. So all good things really. And I hope that you all had the same kind of new years. So all of that being said, I wish you a great new year. Uh, all of that being said, I am ready to start more podcasts. And our first topic of 2020 here on the sex podcast with Becky, I am talking about sex toys. Now, I feel like it's been kind of a popular theme here. Uh, when talking with me on this podcast, uh, we have, we have some reoccurring themes, I would say. Um, one of course being, always be open and honest, open communication with your partner. It's key to everything. And also dispelling myths that sex is, you know, dirty in a bad way. Sex should be shameful, you know, all of those things. And I think sex toys also belong in that secondary, secondary category. I think there's a thought that people don't need sex toys. People don't care about sex toys. Uh, sex toys are only if you're into, you know, harder core play or, or more intense forms of sexual experiences than what I'm into. Um, and, and that's, that's not really the case. Sex toys can be a really great addition to your sexual repertoire. And what I mean by this is I am somebody who cannot get to an orgasm with just sex alone. I need more than that. I need some kind of, you know, clitoral stimulation or, you know, something, something else in addition to in order to help me get to that fuzzy place, <laughs> to that special orgasmic place. Um, and, and I think myself along with many other women have the same problem. Um, you know, there are seldom women out there who, can have sex and orgasm every single time. I mean, God bless them, but I am, I am not one of them. By introducing sex toys into the conversation, you now are opening the possibility of, you know, having more orgasms during your sexual encounters. And this can definitely be, I would think, an easier process in a long-standing relationship or long-standing, you know, friendship with benefits. Um, and it can be a little harder in, I think, first-time encounters. However, if you have been listening to my podcasts, <laughs> um, you know, having those first-time encounters and being open and honest with what you want, being able to communicate what you want sexually, um, is really going to help you, you know, if you're, starting something new with a new partner, you're going to feel more confident about saying, this is what I want and this is the way it's got to be because that way you're having fun and I'm having fun. So all of that, you know, in consideration, I think we should stop the assumption that 
we don't need sex toys or that sex toys are unnecessary. Um, some people need them. And I, I mean, granted, I'm, I'm somebody who is more than happy to introduce a sex toy <laughs> into any, any form of play. Um, and specifically, I wanted to talk today about, um, sex toys that you can use with a partner as well as by yourself. For a long time, I had the assumption that sex toys had to be masturbatory only and that introducing them to a partner was, you know, weird or no, that's just for you. But this, again, this isn't the case. Um, and, and like I have discovered over the years, um, sex toys can be shared, um, you know, depending on the sex toy, I will say that, um, uh, you know, sex toys can be brought into, um, multiple partner relationships. They can be, you know, between you and your single partner. They can be for you alone. It really just depends on how you want to use them and how using them will bring you the most pleasure in, in being with your partners. So what kind of sex toys are there? Now, obviously, uh, like I had said before, I'm mostly focusing this segment on sex toys that you can use with a partner or with yourself. Um, and the first one I wanted to cover is dildos. Um, and dildos slash vibrators, um, slash vibrating things. <laughs> um, and, and I say this because you have your dildo, which is something that does not vibrate, but is shaped, um, as a penis. Uh, you have your vibrators, which usually are not necessarily shaped like a uh, realistic penis, but they are more amorphic. Um, a lot of them are called rabbits or, you know, other kind of cutesy animal names. Um, and then you also have vibrators for your fingers, uh, which is actually a toy that I did not know was on the market. And let me tell you, I am buying one immediately. <laughs> um, but it's, um, you know, you have a small, the one that I have seen, it's, it's almost like a small cube that you can strap around your fingers or has something that you can, you know, hold in order to use it, you know, on the body. So that can be something interesting, you know, both for yourself or for you with a partner. And I also find that, you know, smaller sex toys or smaller objects in the bedroom can seem less scary to introduce to a new uh, to a new partner or even to a partner who you're thinking that you want to start introducing sex toys in. Um, I find that smaller things can be a little more friendly in starting that conversation. Uh, that's just my experience. Um, I know that many people would be ecstatic to have larger items brought in. Um, but for me, I think it's a little easier if you're already nervous about ha having the conversation. So the second toy I wanted to bring up is uh, butt plugs or plugs used for anal play. I will say I think there's a stigma um, within sexual society that is, you know, more on the heterosexual spectrum that I think a lot of men feel like anal play is not for them. There's no way in, in, in any, in any situation that they would ever do it. Um, and I think a lot of women think of it in kind of a similar way of, oh, it will hurt. Um, I won't like it. It's, you know, it's gross, blah, blah, blah. And you are more than entitled to those opinions. Um, but I will say most people with penises have a G spot that can only be accessed through the back door, if you know what I'm saying. And I think that people with vaginas, you know, don't understand that there is other sexual sensations that can come from accessing this erogenous zone. So introducing things like butt plugs can be something that you want to experiment with in, in that it isn't the commitment of having anal sex or it isn't the commitment of, of, of having your partner around that zone, but it is something where it's an object that you can insert and go from there. And if you like it, great. If you don't like it, you never have to try it again. The third toy I wanted to mention today um, is specifically designed for people with penises. Um, I think that you could probably use these with, um, with strap-ons as well. Um, 
but specifically um, penis rings or male vibrators. I think there's a thought that sex toys are really only for women um, and that really the only sex toys that men have to their advantage are things like fleshlights or uh, or the larger machines, which we'll talk about in a second. But there are also several variants of cock rings, penis rings, um, male vibrators um, that that look very similar to female marketed products, but are designed to either hold parts of the penis or to vibrate in order to stimulate sections. Um, and I thought it was kind of important to bring these, these kind of toys into the conversation because for me, I was like, oh, wow, I didn't, <laughs> I mean, as a woman who doesn't necessarily need to buy male sex toys, I had no idea that there were, <laughs> you know, seven or eight other variations other than like the fleshlight for, for those with penises. So fun fact, <laughs> there are, there are plenty of options for, you know, for people with penises, including these. And one of the great things about like vibrating penis rings is that, you know, you can put it on the penis and it will vibrate. So you're getting sensation that way. But then it also has a secondary component on top that is also vibrating. This can be great for clitoral stimulation. It can be great for, you know, just overall stimulation. And, and again, it's something small that you can introduce and see if it works for you without feeling like it's a big, scary device. And then the last toy I wanted to bring up is, of course, you know, the infamous flashlight and all of its variants. Um, I had no idea <laughs> that the flashlight had automatic variants. Um, there's virtual reality involved now. There is uh, mechanical components to simulate feeling like you're getting a blowjob or feeling like you're having sex with someone. Um, there's, I feel like there's a lot of sophistication <laughs> that has gone into these, these kinds of sex toys. And I, one, I find it so fascinating. And two, I'm a little jealous that, <laughs> that there isn't, um, more female thought sex toys within the same frame of a lot of these toys have visual stimulants. They have tactile stimulants and, uh, and sensory stimulants as well. There's, there's virtual reality involved. There's, you know, all these other elements. And so as a woman <laughs> who has a vagina, I'm interested to know why why a lot of toys that are marketed towards me don't have those extra components to them. So something to think about, definitely. <laughs> and on that note, I'm going to be taking a quick break. And when I come back, we're going to be talking a little bit about foreplay. Stay tuned. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast, your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. Welcome back to the GSMC Sex Podcast, hosted by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am, again, of course, your host, Becky. And in our first segment, we were talking about sex toys and the different variants that they can come in, um, how to use them with partners, such and such. Um, and in this segment, we're talking a little bit about foreplay. And for me, I know foreplay is is super important because I am not someone who can just kiss you for a minute to two minutes and then just be ready. I, I need extra sensory things going on. I need, I need a little extra care, I guess you could say, before I'm ready to go all the way. 
And so let's start the conversation by answering the question, what is foreplay? And from everything that I can see online, foreplay is everything until intercourse, everything before intercourse. Um, so this means kissing, touching, dry humping, taking each other's clothes off. It can be strip tease. It can be licking. It can be grabbing. It can, you know, all of those things that you have before any type of intercourse. And the one thing that I haven't been able to quite differentiate is do, is oral sex considered intercourse? And if so, does that mean that oral sex is not included in foreplay? And I'll be honest, I can't answer the question um, because I think from a medical sense, it wouldn't belong in foreplay. But I think in a, in other senses, it, it is kind of involved in that foreplay process. Um, you know, it can be something to get you started before you decide to have sex. So interesting thought, first of all, <laughs> but I thought it was an interesting way of looking at foreplay. Um, for me, I'm someone, like I said, who needs a little extra stimulation before I have sex of any kind. So for me, foreplay is super, super important. Um, and I mean, like we've said on here before, I think there's a common misconception with people that, like in the movies, they're making out for a couple minutes and then they are immediately ready for sex. Um, and I think that gives the wrong impression of what everyday people may need in the bedroom. But if you weren't sure if you need foreplay or if foreplay is necessary, let me give you this fun tidbit of information. Um, foreplay can actually help build emotional intimacy while also increasing the amount of arousal that you have during that moment. And I thought this was kind of an interesting fact because, of course, for me personally, I know that if I'm having foreplay, I'm going to get more turned on, um, which will eventually, when we're ready to have sex, it will help that process along. It will help my body get ready for that. And it's also going to increase, like, my sexual desire. It's going to make me, you know, want it that much more. But the fact that it also helps increase, but the fact that it also helps build emotional intimacy, I thought was an interesting thought. Um, because you have these moments with each other of being, you know, close and there's, you know, you have desire involved and it's all of those steps leading up to you're trusting someone with your body, right? And like we've said on this podcast before, there's something very intimate about letting yourself be vulnerable in that capacity. So by doing things like kissing, like touching, those elements bring us closer together. I think we can all agree that when you have a really good kiss, it, it can knock the wind out of you in like, in the best possible way, of course. Um, but there are, there are several reasons for this. And one of the things that is so important in foreplay is, you know, kissing, is touching, is taking clothes off, you know, all of those things. But when you have a really good kiss, um, the effect that it has on you is so interesting because when you have a really good kiss, and I'm not talking about like a peck on the lips or a peck on the cheek, I'm talking about a full on arms wrapped around each other, really passionate kiss. It releases chemicals in your brain that help you feel happy, that help you feel energized. So there's a reason that kissing is kind of a fundamental part of foreplay and a fundamental part of creating emotional intimacy with each other. And I think we can all agree that there's something to be said about having these moments together and about creating this state before the most intimate act, which is sex, I would say. There's something to be said about being with someone in that capacity. And 
I know for me personally, this is really important. Um, but I also know that for other people, you know, they say, oh, I don't need to do that. You know, I'm not interested in that. But if you have a partner who doesn't want to engage in foreplay, but you need that, please tell them <laughs> and please, you know, make sure that they know this is really important to me in order to one, make sure that my body is ready for sex and two, because I want to spend that time connecting with you. Don't forget that also foreplay can be the main event rather than sex. Um, I mean, you can introduce toys, you can introduce dry humping, apparently not just for teenagers anymore. Um, dry humping, you know, licking, teasing, strip tease. There are so many things that you can do that are going to height your sensory awareness, um, within your body, especially in, you know, in foreplay, you're doing a lot of teasing, you're doing a lot of touching. So your body is already becoming more heightened to the sense. And then adding sex in on top of that is, it's going to intensify everything. And on that note, I'm going to take a quick break. And when I come back, we're going to be talking about positions. Stay tuned. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Sex Podcast, hosted by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am again, of course, your host, Becky. And in our first segment, we talked about sex toys and trying to dispel the myth that we don't need sex toys or sex toys aren't needed in general. Uh, in our second segment, we talked about foreplay and the importance of foreplay, the different logistics of foreplay. Um, the benefits of foreplay. And in our final segment today, I wanted to talk a little bit about sexual positions and not necessarily in detail of, you know, what sexual positions, but just sexual positions in a general sense. Um, I think it's an interesting topic to talk about. One, because I think it's, I don't think it's something that we as a society, as a society, um, think of on a whole. And two, I think it's an interesting way of experimenting um, without going into the realm of BDSM or, you know, the realm of different subgenres of fetish. So in terms of positions, I think first, first of all, you have your classic positions. You have missionary, um, cowgirl, cowboy, doggy style. You've got those, you know, kind of, I don't know, five or six classic positions, which of course are solid. And I'm not saying to not use them, um, because they are always, they are always going to do the job. That's why they're classics. Um, that's why you see them used most often in TV and film sex scenes. Um, however, if you are thinking that maybe these are getting a little stale, maybe you're thinking you want to do something different, then adding new positions or different positions can help spice things up, one. And you may find things that, you know, penetrate in a different way. 
that, you know, are touching something in a different way that you didn't think you need to touch during sex, but now you do. <laughs> there are, there are definitely a lot of things that you can find and explore when you are experimenting. And it, it wouldn't be right to talk about this, uh, this topic of conversation without bringing up things like the Karma Sutra. Um, you can go into any bookstore and more than likely find the Karma Sutra. Um, you'll probably find a book of like 101 sexual positions. Um, more than likely you'll find a position calendar where every day is a new position. Um, and these are all great. And these are all great resources that you can use. And I, you know, I would encourage you to either put your money into those things or go online and find excerpts from them that you can then bring into the bedroom. I think that, you know, we live in a time where if you think it, you can do it. So in talking about sexual positions, I truly believe that there is a, one, a position for everyone. And two, I think that we are often frightened by unusual positions or thinking to ourselves, I could never get my leg in that position or I could never contort my body that way. Um, and I would, I would recommend trying. I mean, the worst that can happen is you get to that point and you say, no, this is really uncomfortable. I'm never like, this doesn't feel good. Let's stop. <laughs> and even if that's the case, you tried it. It didn't work. Now you can try something else. Or if you want, you can go back to the classics because you know those work. One thing that you can do with your partner that is kind of fun um, is I would recommend finding some clip of a sexual act, whether it be porn, whether it be from the movies, and watching it with your partner and saying, I think we can do that. And then try to replicate it. You know, whether it be a crazy position, whether it be something a little more tame, um, whether it be, you know, again, something, you know, into light bondage or, or into different kinds of foreplay. For example, if your partner is really into the notebook, try to recreate that scene where they just got home from the rain and they're kissing and they're tearing each other's clothes off. Try and recreate that in your own home. See what happens. Is it hot? Is it sexy? You know, it is it incorporating a bit of role play? Is it incorporating a bit of, you know, a difference in your normal sexual routine? Or do you feel silly? I mean, really, there's no wrong way of, of trying any of these things. And one, it's going to make you closer. And two, you're going to have fun. Um, especially if you're with the right person. Um, because the last thing that I would say about positions is don't forget to laugh. And this is a tip that goes for all variations of sex, whether it be, you know, foreplay, role play, bondage, all these things. Don't forget to laugh. Um, if something's funny, don't feel like just because you're having sex, you can't laugh because you can. Sometimes things are funny and sometimes things go wrong or sometimes somebody burps or sneezes. It's okay to laugh. Um, sex isn't, isn't a serious thing. I know a lot of people may think it is, but it's, it's something that we do to become closer with each other. Um, something that we do for intimacy and connection, something that we do for pleasure, but it's also something that's really fun. And by allowing yourself and your partner to laugh in the middle is going to one, it's going to relieve any tension of, oh, well, am I doing this wrong? Am I doing this right? I don't know. And then you laugh. At first, it can seem a little, oh, no, I am doing this wrong. But then the tension melts away after that because you are now giving them per permission to laugh with you. And on that note, that is all the time I have today. As always, I am your host, Becky. I want to again say to everyone, Happy New Year. I hope your new year is filled with nothing but safe, fun, sexual encounters, sexual experimentation. 
Um, and as always, please follow us on social media. Join the conversation. Uh, our Facebook page is Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast. And you can also find us on Twitter under GSMC underscore sex. And if you have a minute, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Uh, a good review always helps us out. You can let us know how we're doing. You can let me know how I am doing. I am so excited for this new year. I'm so excited for you in this new year. You know, we made it through 2019. We're going into 2020 with eyes wide and nothing but good things in our future. So as always, I'm your host, Becky. I will see you all next time. Bye. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From sex and relationships to health and wellness, life and happiness, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast.